Hi, everybody. This is Apostle Misha Softier welcoming you to this Wednesday night's uh, edition to Study in the Word. And tonight the topic is going to be our victory in Christ. Our victory in Christ. And what a time uh, to bring a message like this or a study like this when we really need to know that we're victorious uh, despite the... Uh, things that we see around us and the devil trying to uh, tell us and show us anything but victory, right? And so the Lord put it on my heart today for us to uh, study and for this to be the topic of the message. So uh, we're starting a little bit early, so before uh, we get to that time, I want to uh, make just a few opening announcements that... Uh, for those that listen later on that uh, come in. And that would be um, uh, to be sure if you uh, support the message and you like the message that we bring here, that I bring here, to uh, share this with others on your Facebook page. Um, I would know when I broadcast this that they, the messages go to my friends and to some in the, in the public. But every one of you uh, have friends. Hello, Beatrice. How are you? God bless you. Every one of you have friends that you can share this uh, message with, and so I encourage you to hit the share button and uh, get the word out and pass it forward. That's your way of supporting our ministry, okay? And we, we don't look for funds or for donations or anything like that, but we're asking you to just uh, uh, pass the message forward to others, okay? And if you hit the like button, others will see that the post was uh, good, and and it will encourage them to... Uh, tune in and to hear the Word of God, and it's a way of just being able to sow that seed uh, to others and maybe even reap uh, the seeds that others have sown uh, in the hearts of, uh, of people that might be listening, okay? So uh, today we're going to study uh, out of the book of Romans chapter 8. It'll be Romans chapter 8. We'll be beginning with the 26th verse, okay? So I just want you to know where we're going, and uh, then we'll uh, begin to start in, in a few minutes. I, I'll open up with prayer and everything. I want you in advance to please excuse me. Um, I recently had surgery um, just uh, uh, five or six days ago, a major surgery actually on the side of my face. I got the band-aids off today. The stitches are back here, but um, I have to still take a little bit of medication because of that, and so uh, I will not lie. I'm going to tell you it makes me a little bit uh, uh, groggy. That uh, would be the best way to put it. Uh, hey, Lorena, God bless you. Um, it makes me a little bit groggy. I, I greet people until we're ready to get started. And after that, if you sign on, I'm sorry. I see you, but I can't uh, break in, uh, break my message, okay? But anyway, I had to take a little medication. But I got all the Band-Aids out today. And there's a lot of, bad, a lot of stitches back here and everything. But... Uh, I'm feeling good, and uh, uh, but but I still have to take this medication. It makes me a little bit dazed, uh, but I, but not too dazed for the Holy Spirit to move and for the Word to uh, come forth. And so I know God will bless us with a good word this evening. And we really need to know in the times that we're living in right now that we do have victory in Christ and, and where our victory comes from and what it is. And so I think this is such a, an appropriate message. I, I didn't know. I kind of prayed on the way uh, <clears throat> home from my doctor's visit today and asked the Lord, what is it that you want? And I wasn't really getting anything from him. What is it that you want me to bring tonight? And I couldn't get anything until I uh, uh, got over here to the house and I'm sitting here and I got the dog in the bed and the room door closed. And, um, and then the Lord just uh, kind of led me to this uh, chapter. And I thought, wow, this, as I read it and just kind of scanned through it, you know, the Lord showed me how appropriate it really is for the times that we're living in. Because when you turn on the news, all you hear is bad news. It just seems to get worse and worse. It's not better. It seems to get worse. There's more and more uh, uh, bad news on, on, on every channel. And, and it's designed, of course, there's a lot of politics behind it all try to shut the country down, crash the economy. And I, I suspect that after the November elections, uh, things will probably begin to change in some respects. But, you know, there is a uh, battle going on for the soul of this country right now. 
And that, that really is true. Uh, Satan would like to see nothing more than to see an anti-Christ, socialistic, uh, tyrannical country as opposed to a, a democratic country where we have the right to worship, we have the right to go to church, we can praise God and worship as we choose, and a lot of other things, too, that pertain to our children and their schooling and, and everything else, okay? So you need to be in prayer about that, but while you see it all happening uh, in uh, on television and everything, it's, it's easy to become overwhelmed by what you watch and what you hear. If you're inundated uh, buy it on TV and you're inundated by the radio and you turn on Facebook and you look at your news feeds or your, or your or your regular feeds and people are posting this and they're posting that and all of it seems so negative and sometimes I see just consternation or just uh, anguish even among uh, so many Christians as to what's happening and to me though I don't really view it that way. I, the Bible has told me since I was a child that these days were coming. Uh, the Lord has spoken about this in prophecy, and I've gone through it in some of my last messages, and I can probably do it in some of the future ones too, that we would see these days uh, coming on us. They would be like birth pangs. We would hear of uh, disturbances and wars and rumors of wars and uh, all the types of things that we're seeing going on in the streets right now and in uh, political upheaval and uh, all types of uh, just craziness and chaos. Uh, but the Bible says that that's not yet the end, but it's only birth pangs. Uh, but but uh, birth pangs are a sign of new life coming forth. And anybody that's had children is, uh, knows that when you have birth pangs, they're contractions. And those contractions, they become more rapid and more intense. And they begin to speed up in frequency until new birth is born. New birth comes forth. And we know that we're right at that uh, doorstep of the coming of the Lord, the return of the Lord. And so we're seeing it, things that have happened maybe at different periods of time in history, but we're seeing them all begin to conglomerate together and intensify you know, like birth pangs until we see that new birth and we see the Lord returning for his saints. And so, folks, uh, Jesus is coming and uh, we're getting close, okay? So be encouraged, okay? So, uh, let me just begin with a word of prayer. Father, I thank you so much, Lord, for the opportunity, Lord Jesus, <clears throat> to bring this message this evening. I pray, Lord, for your strength to do it. Um, Lord, that you'll anoint me uh, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that the words that I bring will not be my words, Lord, but they'll be yours. And Father, that you'll give each person that's listening, Lord, a spirit of uh, understanding, Lord, that it's not just a mental Thing that goes in an ear in in one ear and out the other, or something we hold in our mind for a minute, but then uh, an hour from now we can't remember what the what message was about. But Lord, it, it that, that you you place it and plant it as a seed within our our spirit, so that it grows and that we become an expression of that word. You said my words are spirit and that they're life, and so Lord, we know that any word that proceeds, Lord, out of this 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 Bible, Lord Jesus. And that proceeds out of our mouths from here is a living word, Lord, that will bring forth life uh, in Jesus and, 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 and to whomever hears. And so, Lord, I pray that that takes place tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, uh, if you have your Bibles, uh, turn with me to Romans chapter 8. We're going to begin in verse 26. We're going to, and what I'm going to do is just an expository uh, going probably uh, through the, through, from 26 to the end of the chapter. And um, I'm going to read and just stop and make some comments that I, I believe will uh, be an encouragement to you, and you can read along with me. And uh, also, just so you know, I'm posting these uh, messages on YouTube now, so they can always be found there if Facebook ends up deleting them. If not, they'll, they'll be on Facebook, uh, and many of my messages going back for months now are still here. On Facebook Live, uh, where, where, I mean, on Facebook, where you can view them, and um, I'll also probably be transferring them to my uh, ministry website at some point in time. Okay, and that's at www.misha m i s c h a uh, softie s is in Sam, a is in Adam, f is in Frank, d is in David, i e uh, ministries dot com. Okay, so you can always look there for some cool things, and uh, God, I know, will bless you. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with this, all right? And, and beginning in verse 26, uh, Romans 8. It begins this way. In the same way, the Spirit... Notice the Spirit, the word Spirit being capitalized. So we know we're talking about the Holy Spirit here. In the same way, the Spirit also helps our weakness. Okay, uh, for we do not know how to pray as we should. And that's really true. How many times have you long to pray and you, you see things going on in your life and going on in the world but you just don't know how to verbalize or how to 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 express to God the anguish uh, maybe that's going on in your heart or in your spirit but the bible says that the spirit the holy spirit helps us or he helps our weakness for we do not know how to pray as we should and then he goes on to say but the spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. I don't know if you've ever felt that before, but it's nice to know that the Spirit himself is interceding for us. Not only does the Spirit intercede for us, but folks, Christ intercedes for us also. He's He, he is making intercession before the Father. The Holy Spirit is making intercession uh, for us before Christ and before the Father. The Holy Spirit takes our needs uh, and, and many times uh, reveals uh, what's going on in our lives, not only to us, but it's also brought to 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 the to, to heaven's uh, throne, to the throne room where Christ uh, takes it, and he is the, he's the great intercessor and the great mediator uh, between uh, man and the Father, and he makes intercession for us. Okay, so I think we've got when we, when you've got God and you've got the Holy Spirit actually interceding, praying, actually standing in the gap for you. Believe me, folks, you're not fighting these battles alone. We get overwhelmed sometimes by the things we see on the news, and it seems like the devil is just running wild on this earth. But, folks, the devil can go no further than what God will allow. You know, Satan is not the not the uh, uh, king of kings. He's not the lord of the of of, uh, of lords. Um, he's the prince of this earth only because man forfeited it, uh, 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 forfeited that to him through Adam and Eve's uh, uh, sin in the Garden of Eden. But Jesus has conquered uh, the devil. And if we will, as individual Christians, begin to put our faith in what Christ has done on the cross and put our faith in the victory that he's won for us, we don't have to live uh, in, in subjection to, to the enemy. But we can begin to experience the victory that Christ won on the cross for us and begin to experience victory over the oppression, the depression, the negativity, and the defeat that Satan would like to bring into your life. Okay, so we continue because the Spirit intercedes for us with groanings that are too deep for words. Verse 27, And he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Who are we talking about here? We're talking about the Lord. Jesus Christ is the one who searches the hearts. And he knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he intercedes for the saints. That means he's interceding for you and for me. Those of you that have asked Jesus Christ into your life as your Lord and Savior, that the, the Spirit and, and Christ, they intercede for you according to the will of God. Now, I like verse 28 because it says, And we know that God causes all things to work together for the good of those who love God to those who are called called according to his purpose. And you're called, okay? Folks, sometimes there, there's a scripture, and many people misunderstand it, um, and, and they, they, they think, well, you know, because the Bible says many are called, but few are chosen, that, well, you know, I wonder if I'm, I'm called, or I wonder if I'm, cho I'm one of the chosen ones. Folks, okay, this is, to make this a very clear scripture for you, this is a simple statement. It's not that, some are called, but too bad, you know, you may not be chosen. That's not what it's trying to say. When he's say, he's, he, it's, it's simply a statement of fact that God is trying to make, that many are called, but few are chosen. That's not because God doesn't want you. It's because you get to make the choice as to be whether you're chosen or not. And so he's simply stating, many are called, but few are chosen. If we were to paraphrase it, we would say, say it like this. Many are called, but few choose to be chosen. Okay? Some do, some don't. So he's only making a statement of fact, but the choice is up to you. God has called many, okay? He's called, he died for the sins of the world, but it's up to you to decide whether you want to accept that calling, 
whether you want to accept what Christ did on the cross for you or not. Okay, and so when the Word says, and we know that God causes all things to work together for the good of those who love God, those who are called according to His purpose. Folks, you're called according to His purpose. That's you. Okay? And I like this because some people misquote this scripture. They they say, all things work together for the good of those that love God. That's not what the Bible says. It says, we know that God causes all things. It doesn't. Some people think that all things are for the good. That's not what it says either. It's, it simply says God causes all things. He will take things that are not necessarily good, but he will work them together for the good. And this is what I believe God will do for you and for me. It doesn't matter what we're going through in this world. It doesn't matter what the rest of the world is going through. It doesn't matter what you see on the news. This is where our victory in Christ comes because we know that God causes all things to work together for the good of those who are called of God, okay, or those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose, okay? So for, for this, you should rejoice because it's not just in your hands. It's not just a matter of what you do, folks. It, it, it's really a matter of, of what God does. It's a matter of you staying firm, and that's the biggest thing that you have to do during these times of uh, discouragement in these times of negativity is for you not to become negative and not to become discouraged, but stay firm in your walk and your relationship with him despite what you see, despite what you hear, and despite what other people are saying to you. Make a decision within your own heart that you are going to continue to be steadfast, like the Bible says, be steadfast and immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord and knowing that your toil or that your work is not in vain. The devil will try to tell you the opposite, but you have to throw that stinking thinking out of your mind and say, I'm not going to accept that. I'm going to walk with God. I'm going to continue to trot on and to, to continue to walk on and continue to move forward, irrespective of what's going on to the left of me or what's going on to the right of me or even what's going on in front of me and certainly what's, what, what's going on behind me. I'm going to continue to walk forward. Okay, and so that's what you do. All right, uh, verse 29 goes on to say, For those whom the Lord foreknew, those whom he foreknew, he also predestined. See, those God has foreknown us. The Bible says we were, <clears throat> even before we were formed in the womb, God knew us. Okay, so no one here that is watching, folks, none of you that have made Christ the Lord of your life were an accident in somebody's bedroom. Okay, all those little tadpoles that that could have gotten into that little egg. Okay, God picked you. He of all the ones, the millions or thousands that could have gone there, the Lord chose you, and he, he, because He foreknew you, and then because He foreknew you, He predestined you, which means that He had a purpose for you. That's what predestination really means: is His purpose. He 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 has a plan for you. So He predestined you for what? to become conformed to the image of his son. Okay? So that's what we are as Christians to be. We are to be Christ-like, conformed to the image of his son, so that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. Do you realize that, folks? How many of you know or have ever thought of the fact that you're actually a brother of Jesus Christ? We, he's the firstborn of many brethren. We're not just children of the king. We're brothers of Christ. That's what the Word of God says. He is the he would be the firstborn among many brethren, and those whom he predestined you and me. Okay, he also called, and we already talked about that. Okay, you're called, and those whom he called you, he also justified. Okay, what does that mean? It means that. Despite that, despite any of the any faults that you may have, despite your failures and shortcomings, because you've trusted in Christ and His work for you at the cross, the shedding of His blood on Calvary, which atones for your sins, that you do not have to stand before God the Father in your own righteousness, but you stand before Him in Christ's righteousness. He took His burdens uh, or your burdens upon Himself at the cross, and so therefore. Um, while the Satan comes like a prosecutor and tries to point out your faults and all your uh, uh, failures, even though some, they may be true, 
Jesus is the one that justifies you, okay? You are justified before God because of what Christ has done on the cross. And he, as your defense attorney, says not guilty, not guilty. You're not guilty. And uh, so we don't stand before the Lord in our ourselves. Some people do. They think they do. And that's called self-righteousness. That's where people think that if they do enough good works and they climb that stairway to heaven and they try and they try and they try and they try that somehow if they just do good enough and well enough, they can earn their way into heaven. But folks, even if there's one sin in our life, we've, we've, we've already failed because God is perfect and a perfect God has a perfect heaven. Sin can't enter into heaven. That is why we need the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. So we don't enter into heaven based on our own merits of what we do, but we base uh, we, we enter in based on our faith and what Christ did for us on the cross. Okay, that being said, uh, our, certainly what we do will come into play because if you're really walking with the Lord and you love Christ, you also do good works, okay? But it will not be because you're trying to earn your way into heaven. It'll be because you love the Lord and out of your love and your desire to serve him will come good works and a, des- a desire to be pleasing to the Lord to do the, do, do what's right and to follow and be obedient to God's word. I hope that was, uh, that was a lot. And uh, uh, for a guy that uh, I had to take medication a half an hour before he brought the message, but I hope you understand it, okay? And I know that we hit it on the head uh, perfectly. Okay, now, so the word says also, it says that, um, let's read verse 30 again. And those whom he predestined, he also called, and those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. Folks, God is glorifying you. We're being transformed even now from glory to glory. As you walk with God, and I was going to say, don't you don't you know it, know it? But some of you may not. But you are continually being changed. We are continually being transformed. We are continually being glorified. And then there'll be that ultimate glorification that comes when we see the Lord face to face, and when we're, when we're with Him in heaven, and. Uh, We'll, we'll we'll see that ultimate glorification, okay? But we're in that process even right now, okay? Verse 31 goes on to say, What then shall we say to these things? Folks, r- remember this, okay? Because remember the next word and underline it. If God is for us, who is against us? Okay? If God is for you, who can be against you? Uh, Satan can't win. He's already lost, okay? And no matter uh, the world can't win. And no matter what you're seeing in politics, no matter what you're seeing in society and everything else right now, you already have the victory. You will win because if God is for you, who can be against you? That's the question. Okay, verse 32. He who did not spare his own son, this is God the Father, but delivered him over for us all. He delivered him over for you. Okay, how will he not also with him Freely give us all things. Folks, if God is willing to to have Jesus Christ die on the cross for your sins and die for, die for you, okay? Shed his blood for you. Bring reconciliation between you and between him, between the Father. How will he not also give you all the things that, that are necessary or required for you to live in this life, okay? That's why the Bible says that God... Uh, gives us all things that pertain not only to godliness, but it says to life and godliness. So the Lord will, in in, in, in summation, the Lord will take care of you. Okay, this is what the word is saying. How will he, how will he not also with him give freely give you all things? Okay, verse 33. Who will bring a charge against God's elect? Is it going to be the governor of the state? Is it going to be some other governors? Will it be some future president? Will it be the Antichrist? Will it be uh, uh, some of your Facebook friends that don't like the way that you walk or don't like your opinions or the things that you say? Um, Will it be some anti-God or anti-Christ system that we seem to live in? Who will bring a charge against God's elect? Well, you're, you're God's elect. Who's going to bring a charge against you? Well, here's the answer. God is the one who justifies. We just talked about that. You're already justified in him through Christ. God is the one who justifies, who is the one who, who, is the one, uh, who condemns. 
See, who can bring condemnation on you? How can condemnation uh, have victory over you when Christ has already justified you and has already brought reconciliation uh, uh, between you and the Father through his uh, atonement and th through the shedding of his blood, through his victory on the cross for you? See, it makes no sense. Okay, what, what, what this is trying to tell you is you have the ultimate victory, no matter what. Okay, so let's look at it again. Who will bring a charge against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. Who is the one who condemns? Christ is, uh, is he who died. Yes, rather, who was also raised, who is at the right hand of God, who also, here it is, intercedes for us. Okay, again, we see it now two or three times in this the, the, this part of this chapter, the, the emphasis that we have the Spirit of God and we have Christ himself who, in bring, who intercedes for you. He makes intercession for you. He knows your needs, folks. He knows your heart, even if you can't speak, even if you can't get the words out, even if you're too devastated, even if you don't know what to say, um, even if you're confused. It, God will intercede. He, Christ intercedes for you. He knows your needs. He knows it even before you speak it. Okay? So then here is the question. Okay? Um, he intercedes for us, verse 35. goes, so who will separate us from the love of Christ? A good question. Who can separate you from the love of Christ? Well, tribulation? What is tribulation? It's the things that we're seeing going on all around us right now. Isn't that right? If, you, if that's right and you believe that there's a lot of tribulation, you can put up a, a thumb or something and hit, 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 hit the like on, your, on, on, on the page if you're listening to me and send up a flare because I can see those when they come up. But um, the Bible says here that who will separate us from the love of Christ, okay, well, tribulation or distress, okay, what about distress, or persecution, or famine, and some people are afraid that they we may, we, may, we may never have enough to eat, or persecution, it's obvious persecution is coming, thank you for that flare, I see it coming up, um, who will separate us from the love of Christ, will tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, not having any clothing, or peril, being in danger, or sword, threat of death. Just as this is written, for your sake, we are being put to death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. We are already, we're already dying. Every day we die for Christ because we sacrifice our lives and our wants and our desires and maybe what we could have according to the world's standards and we say no to those things for something better and we sacrifice it for our desire to worship him, to serve him, to love him, to do his will. Okay, so I'm already dying. Okay, I'm already being put to death. I, I died uh, years ago. Some people don't want to believe that you've changed. They look at you and say, we know who you really are. And they base it on knowing you 10 years or 20 years ago, or for some of you, maybe five years ago, whatever. Uh, I remember talking to a, a relative once of mine on the phone. They hadn't spoken to me a long time, and this person seemed to have an issue with me. So uh, uh, this person said to me, well... You're not the lily white person you all you, you act like. We know who you really are. And I my response was, but you know, that person though that you're talking about died twenty years ago or died ten years ago. He's not alive anymore. See, we I, I've already been crucified with Christ. I died with Christ. I died when I accepted him into my heart to be my Lord and my Savior. I died the day that I got off the throne of my heart and put Christ onto the throne. Of my heart. So I've died to Christ. That guy is dead, folks. You are dead. The Bible says you should reckon yourself dead to those things that are uh, past. Don't let people throw your past up in front of your face. And if they do, you reject it. Because in Christ, the Bible says we are new, a new creation. All things have passed away. Old things have passed away. All things have been made new. Okay? It's in the Word of God, folks. Okay? So... Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution, famine or nakedness or peril or sword? But just as it says, for your sake, we are being put to death all day long. We were, we, we were considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Verse 37, I love this. <clears throat> but in all these things, we overwhelmingly, 
folks. Not, we, we're not barely just getting by. The Word says here, we overwhelmingly conquer through Him who loved us. Overwhelmingly. Man, I, folks, I don't know if you're getting this, but just, just saying it, boy, it just sends chills down my, from right here at the top of my head down to my spine to know that I can turn on, flip the TV, which is right over next to me, right on, and we could all, I could turn this this camera, and we could all watch the news and, 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 and stuff. And while I'm watching all these negative things and all the bobbling heads talking and talking heads going back and forth, I am already told here, and it's a matter of fact because the Bible says that the that God cannot lie, that I overwhelmingly conquer through him. So I, no matter what they say there, over there, I'm going to put my finger there so you know where my TV set is, over there, okay, despite all that, despite what we see going on, despite COVID-19 and having to wear a mask and isolate yourself and all that, which has been much politicized, by the way, um, although I'm not going to deny that there's not a sickness. I don't want to get into the, the weeds here and get into that. We know that there are, there are our peril, uh, perils, and we know there's tribulations, and there are famines, and there are pestilence and plagues and things, and there, there, there will be in the future too. But we overwhelmingly conquer. Okay, and this is what he's saying. But in all these things, we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. Now listen to this, folks. This is the one, man, that you got to, if you don't have some, some of these scriptures underlined, you need to get your yellow marker out or whatever you want to use, your black pen, and start underlining some of these verses, okay? For I am convinced, okay, get this now, I am convinced, this is Paul, the Apostle Paul, writing to the in the book of Romans to the, Rome, the Christians in Rome, okay, at a time that he was sitting in jail, knowing that he was going to be beheaded, knowing that he was going to be executed, but here, here was his attitude. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, I don't know whether I need to just break that down for you. But if you take it word for word, folks, it's overwhelmingly great. It's overwhelmingly great. Okay, I am convinced that neither death, if you, neither death, life, whatever kind of life we live in this world, okay, angels, uh, there are good angels and bad angels, okay, but yeah, so we'll just leave it there. Principalities, these are... Um, uh, uh, regions, a principality is an area, and the power is the spirit over that area. So, so we know that principalities, things present, whatever is going on in your life right now, or things that might come in the future. Some of us worry about the future when we shouldn't, because God has it all under control. Okay, uh, nor height, no matter how far away I am or uh, or feel from God, or how high, or how deep, or how low, okay, nor any other created thing, okay, uh, uh, nor powers, okay, uh, height, depth, or any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Folks, nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. I think that there's only one thing that can separate us, and it's really just what we want it's our own will if we if we don't want to walk with god we can we can separate ourselves but it doesn't separate god's love for us he still loves us um but we just reject it if we don't embrace it and and and, and accept it you see what i'm saying um what i always tell people because there are some people that believe that once you're saved you can never lose your salvation i i don't believe you can lose your salvation either okay but this is what i do believe i believe you can walk away from it just like you no one forces you to come to the altar when you accept jesus christ in your life you can certainly turn around and change your mind and, and say you know what I, I i've decided i don't want christ in my life anymore and you can walk away and many do the apostle paul said that i say with tears that many of us many that once walked with us have walked away and have now become enemies of the cross of Christ. So we, yes, it is possible to walk away. So in that sense of the word, it's possible to 
uh, to give, I, I won't say to lose your salvation. Let's just say it's possible to give away your salvation if you don't want it. Okay? But you're not going to lose it. Satan can't take it away from you. You know, you it's a decision you make. And as long as you have made that decision to walk to walk with the Lord and you've made a commitment to walk with Him, nothing can change that, okay? And you, you are heaven-bound. The moment you made that confession to the Lord, no matter what you're going through in life right now, no matter what you see on the news, you, are, you, you have eternal life in heaven. And folks, you also have God's presence and blessings with you. As we studied in this particular message today, you have His blessings and you have his love, and you have his guidance, and you have his prayer and intercession for you right here on this earth where you're living and walking today, no matter what you're going through. And I think that's something to rejoice for, uh, rejoice about. So, folks, um, that's as far as we're going to go. We, we, we finished the, uh, the, the uh, message tonight. And so I would like to just uh, uh, say a prayer with you. And uh, first of all, uh, ask the Lord to uh, uh, touch the hearts of any that might be watching that need to make a recommitment to the to Him. Maybe you're watching tonight and you're saying, uh, "Apostle Misha, I I I've ne- I don't know the Lord, but I'd like to. I'm tired. I'm, I, I'm tired of being like Mick Jagger, who tried and he tried and he tried and he tried, but he just couldn't get no satisfaction, right?" Um, and and I, I think there have been many of us that tried and tried and tried to fill that small empty spot in our heart with relationships and with uh, drugs and sex and materialism and homes and cars and, and relations and what all the things that are out there that the world says will make you happy only to find out that after we had it all, we were still empty, okay? Um, but because God created that small spot, uh, small spot in your heart, sorry, to only be filled by him. All right. So maybe that's you and you saying, I need Christ in that spot. I need that spot to be filled. I'm tired. I, I, I've, I've done everything and I still feel empty. All right. You'll know, you'll never feel that fullness and that joy until you ask Christ into your heart. And then there are those that say, well, I, I have asked the Lord into my heart, but I've just seemed to wander. Or I stray or maybe I, I, I've strayed away or or I'm not as close to God as I want to be, and I want to make a recommitment. And folks, if that's you, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I'll be honest. I, I've been in ministry 46 years now, and I recommit my life to Christ <laughs> probably every every few days, it seems like. Not because I'm out sinning and doing terrible things, but because I just feel this need to be closer to Him. And, that, and, and I continually see my shortcomings uh, in front of me, and and it beca- but it's not out of condemnation, but just that I want to be closer to God. I want to be more like Him. I want to know Him better. I want to uh, be given over more to Him, and that's just that pursuing after God. And and so there's nothing wrong with making that recommitment. So let's pray this prayer together. And please don't 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 uh, go. Don't hang up. Don't uh, sign out right now because this is the most important time, folks. Uh, the Bible says a threefold cord is not easily broken, and where two or more gathered, that he's in the midst. You know, we're meaning that, um, you know, like one can put a thousand to flight, and two can put ten thousand, right? You, you see that scripture, right? So there, there, is, there is power of faith in unity, okay? And so when we, there is somebody here tonight that's going to watch this, and if they're not watching me live right now, you'll come on later on that's going to be in that place where they need to make that commitment or that recommitment. And it will be important for them to know, number one, that Christ makes intercession. He he, he sees and the Holy Spirit sees and they're, they're, they're pulling for you. But we also have those of us right here on Facebook Live that have already prayed and that are praying right now for you so that you can make that decision for Him and that God will strengthen you in your walk with Him. Okay, so let's pray that prayer together right now, folks. Lord Jesus, I thank you because... Lord, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins, that you rose from the dead, Lord, on the third day, and that you sit at the right hand of the Father right now. Lord, I know that I've fallen short in my life. Lord, I know that I've sinned. And uh, Lord, I'm asking today that you forgive me of my sins, Lord. I'm willing to repent and to turn around and go the other direction, Lord. Lord, I ask that you forgive me for my sins and that you come into my life and be my Lord and my Savior. Lord, I commit to follow you, Lord, all the days of my life. I I know that I can't do that on my own because, Lord, I I can't even keep a New Year's resolution. But I know, Lord, that 
by your grace, by your power, by your love, by your mercy, and by what you've done for me on the cross and the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, I can do all things through Christ, through you who strengthens me, as the Bible says. And so, Lord, with that in mind, Lord, I, I make a commitment, Lord, to serve you, knowing that you'll help me all the days of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, and I thank you for it. Amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer, then let me uh, just welcome you into uh, the kingdom of God as a citizen, a fellow heir uh, to the kingdom. You are you are now a brother, a brethren, one of Christ's brethren uh, of Jesus, as we read in the study. The first of, he was the first of many brother brethren to be born. Okay? And while we still live in this world, we're in the world, we're not of it, though. Okay, you're a citizen of the kingdom of God. You're an ambassador of Christ, all right? So, and then and finally, I want to just uh, extend my hand and pray a blessing of, 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 of God's protection, his love, uh, revelation, uh, and growth to each one that's listening tonight. I pray that God would just strengthen you and enable you to serve him, that you will Know what you're called to do and to walk in it. And one of the ways I could encourage you in, in this prayer, too, is to tell tell you, God has called all of us to do the work of an evangelist. You're not to sit in church and wonder, what has God called me to do? God has called you to do the work of an evangelist, so start there by sharing others. You say, well, I was sharing with others. You might say, well, Apostle Misha, I'm not a preacher like you. I don't know how to preach, folks. But you don't have to preach. So you can just share your testimony. You can sit down and God will bring the right person to you and you can tell them what the Lord has done for you and uh, and, and, and say, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not a I'm not a scholar about everything in this book, but I know one thing. I know God is real. I know Jesus is real and I know what he's done in my life. And you can begin to share. And believe me, people's lives are changed by the testimony of others. That's a fact. OK, and there are many people that want to know what God did for you because he's hoping that God can do the same thing for them. All right, so be sure and share your testimony um, with others, all right? And, 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 and finally, my prayer is that the word that you heard today will be sealed to your spirit, okay? Not just to your mind, okay, but to your heart and, and that it'll resonate, it'll take place, it'll take root within you and transform you as you continue to grow in him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you folks. I'm so glad that you came on tonight. Uh, I will be on again Sunday uh, night, God willing, at uh, 8 o'clock p.m. Uh, and so I look forward to seeing you. I'm, I'm so thankful. I see, uh, I want to thank uh, Beatrice and Lorena. I see you uh, also and thank you for your uh, comments. I appreciate all of them. I read I read them. Thank you very, very much. And uh, the Lord bless you. I'll be happy to, to come and visit you one day, you know, when I make it up to New Mexico. And uh, Beatrice is always so faithful. Thank you so much for uh, coming on. I'm so glad when I see you. And there are others that are, have signed on too, and some that are on that I can't see. Um, and, and if I could see you, I would acknowledge you right now, but I can't, okay? there's I'm limited on how much space I have. On, on on my phone here. So, uh, but I do want to thank all of you. I know you could be somewhere else and doing something else, but thank you for being here with me. Uh, also, please um, do me a favor. Uh, I'm doing great, okay? So so I don't say this out of uh, uh, any, any problems or anything like that, but keep me in prayer too. You know, um, I, I, I'm, I need your prayers so that I can be effective as a minister uh, uh, to you. And as a servant to the Lord, uh, and to the people that God wants me to speak with, okay? So I appreciate it. God bless you, and I will look forward to seeing you again Sunday night. Bye-bye, and uh, have a good evening.